Hello everyone, watching this uh, short little time lapse, I guess not so short, this will probably end up being close to 10 minutes long, but uh, my name is John, and uh, yeah, this is my little time lapse. I'm starting out on the clouds, uh, and before I mention it, this is a oil painting, and uh, no, I did not prep the surface, because it's really a practice painting. Um, I'm just trying to learn how to paint landscapes a little better. Uh, this is actually more than I normally do, which is uh, outline a little bit of the uh, rock formations that you'll see later in the video with a, a light uh, drawing of raw umber using raw umber. But typically, I don't, I don't really even do that. So I'm trying to tighten up my paintings a little better. They are looser normally, and uh, I deliberate on them a little too much. So, I tried to rush through this just to get another painting under my belt, um, and really kind of turn the faucet um, of dirty water. So just gotta get a bunch of uh, paintings out of my system and slowly hone that, that process a little more. But uh, yeah, the uh, landscapes I'm kind of new to. I've done portraits before and uh, you know watercolors is what I started out on but oil painting landscapes have been uh, a little more of a draw to me because they're so difficult um, there's a artist I follow Renato Machio he is just fabulous at uh, painting and uh, uh, especially landscapes really drawing the beauty of a landscape you know out of you know a mundane uh, you know picture whether it's a puddle or something like that you can make it look so beautiful and so effortless too because his paintings are actually quite loose even though when you step up step away from them they look very very tight now this is a more dramatic landscape this is when uh, I took a trip I think a year or two ago to West Virginia and it was a great trip. We went to the Dolly Sods Wilderness, um, and then uh, Manonangahila National Park, or National Forest, I think it is. But yeah, West Virginia is a very uh, underrated state. Since I live, you know, in Ohio area, it is uh, you know, a day drive. You usually spend a weekend if you go down there. But the uh, Landscapes are quite beautiful, especially with these uh, cloud formations that I was able to see. I took this photo at the top of a, a mountain I can't remember the name of, and uh, the way the horizons and the clouds interact and the, the distant hills are just wonderful. I see uh, they're not as dramatic as maybe the western mountains like the Rockies or the Cascades. Uh, there is an allure though to uh, West Virginia. It's uh, not super populated. It seems like a forgotten state, and that is one of the, the beauties of it. It's just so uh, quiet in a way. It seems like the world passes around it and kind of forgets about West Virginia. But that, that might just be because I'm visiting it and staying in the, uh, the forested areas and the mountainous areas. It kind of is the same unless you go to a, a pretty popular national park. Uh, the national parks are a lot more busy, even though you are in the mountains. So there's not a super uh, popular national park in West Virginia. So you see a lot less traffic, at least when I'm there. And especially if you visit it off season in the fall or the springtime. Um, yeah, so you get a lot of, of solitude. You could do some backcountry camping, like the Dolly Sods is nice. Because it's a few, there's very few places out in the eastern United States where you can uh, backcountry camp and be, you know, at least like a, a day hike away from the parking lot. Uh, maybe the Smoky Mountains are pretty, they're pretty populated, and maybe if you can get up into Maine, that'd be a nice stretch of wilderness. But uh, yeah, um, so back to the painting. I got a little off track, but this. Uh, the horizon, this part right here, is probably my favorite part of the painting. I uh, labored a little more on it. I'm pretty happy with uh, the depth 
that I was able to produce. The sky, not so much. I gave up on it a little bit. And I decided it was best just to keep going. Um, it was difficult. I know the blue looks blotchy in this video, but I was trying to, you know, turn the closer to the, uh, the the big left dark cloud as it goes into the blue sky. Um, I wanted to gradiate into it, but right now it just looks like it's not <laughs> really touching the blue. Um, I may fix that later, I may not, but once again this is just uh, a practice painting. I'm pretty happy with eventually how it turns out, but um, I just know that you know a future painting will be more worth my effort because of what I've learned from this painting instead of just fixing and fixing. And that's the hardest thing with painting. Um, I've learned from my brother. He's He paints a fair amount and uh, he's rather accelerated quite quickly. Um, and it's just because he doesn't keep trying to fix paintings. And it's that is the hardest thing because when we paint something or make music or I've never made music, so I can't say that. But when I'm painting, I want it to be something I'm proud of, especially if you spend a couple hours or even, you know, a couple days on. It it's hard to not feel like a failure after having, you know, finished something and it's you know where the mistakes are. But uh, right now, attempting to move on to another painting is uh, seems like the best way to improve. And uh, this one, this painting is not, uh, you know, I wouldn't say super good, but compared to my previous landscapes, I, I think it's a really good step up. It's a, it shows some depth. Um, I don't get lost in too many details, and it really produces a, you kind of know what you're looking at. I guess that's a win. When you know what you're looking at, um, I think that, that really helps. Uh, from far away, it looks good. Um, the trees right here, I'm relatively happy with what they turned out. I've never done loose leaves like this. I really abstracted out these trees just to try and get shading and, uh, and the light tones in there. The cliff band I'm painting right now, um, that was pretty difficult too because once again, I just love to, I love to over detail things. That's just my habit and uh, to slowly um, loosen up the painting and to especially work with values so that it draws in the viewer to the foreground and then also maybe pulls out the viewer to the distant uh, horizon. Um, that's, that's really hard because when we're looking at uh, painting, I typically, I feel like the, uh, you know, we, at least I trick myself into thinking that values are a lot deeper and harsher farther away. And that's really just because my eyes are drawn over there. If you really look at a, uh, you know, a painting or a, a good picture, the, there's a lot more blue tones in the, the distant horizon, and a lot more brown tones uh, closer to uh, the foreground. And uh, it's hard to, it's hard to, to produce that. But by trying to remain in that sort of uh, mindset. I think it's helped build a little more depth in this painting. Um, but once again, there, there's all obviously exceptions to the rule. And I think so far I'm just following the rule. So I, I've noticed a lot of my paintings typically are just really brown or really blue. Reds seem to be hard for me to work with. I know there's, not, there's no reds in this painting. Uh, my photo reference didn't really have any reds. It was pretty bluish and you know, stormy looking day. So that was helpful. But, you know, super difficult ones are often just trying to do a, uh, maybe a sunset in the distance. And you want to convey depth, but there's like these warm red tones. I don't know, maybe I'll figure it, that out later. But right now, I don't really know. Oh, yeah, it looks like I skipped a time lapse right there. But you can see I'm working on rocks. And the rocks, they were really giving me a hard time. I'm not very happy with what they turned out. Um, I wanted to stay loose, so I didn't follow. I followed the the shape of the rocks and the cliffs, and uh, but I didn't really follow each individual uh, feature. So as I get tighter and tighter, I'm really trying to decide, am I gonna be super messy, or am I gonna be uh, 
trying to just convey what the idea of the rocks are. And so I, I lean towards that, trying to convey the idea of the rocks. And uh, it's just, it came out all right, but I'm gonna have to work on rocks a lot more. Um, they're supposed to look a lot more shiny, I would say, especially with the low light hitting them. Um, but they're pretty opaque looking, a little chalky. And uh, I'm thinking starting off with a little more structure to the rocks would be helpful. And uh, that way they'll look close to the viewer and they will also just have a little more uh, definition and uh, lack of chaos. Pretty chaotic looking to me. Um, especially if they're closer, we should know what we're looking at. And when I look at this, and if I didn't paint it, I don't know if I'd know what I'm looking at with this rock. So <laughs> that's the, uh, this corner is my least favorite part of the painting. Um, I do a little better job with this cliff side right here. And uh, it, it was kind of hard to, to really produce something that looked like the tall, you know, rock spires that I saw at the top of this mountain. And, uh, but I started with a little more form, so I outlined what the spires were a little bit, shaded them out first, and uh, then kind of entered into a little more chaotic, you know, highlights and dark notes. And uh, most of this, too, is a la prima. Um, I do work in stages, but I typically kind of leave a painting the paint alone, like when I start doing the clouds or the horizon, I would do that all in one go, and then I would paint wet on wet um, with each uh, part of the painting. Right now it just seems a little easier to uh, get a nice gradation, um, and yeah, but here's the finished product, uh, pretty happy with it. Uh, lots of room for improvement, but once again that horizon is my favorite part. And uh, yeah, thank you for watching. Uh, have a great day.